so stillness is it a is it a destination no i think i think it's a i think it's something you already have like i think it's primarily something inside you like i don't think stillness is like something you get by going to a 30 day meditation retreat or mm-hmm. by fleeing to a cabin in the woods i think it's something you already have inside you um, and it's about accessing it. And, and, and in a way, this is the, the interesting distinction between the Eastern stillness and the Western stillness. Um, you know, Marcus Aurelius is, is talking more about, you know, stillness by looking inward, stillness amidst the craziness of Rome, uh, of, of the court, you know, of, of, of being still even as one has ambitions and desires and urges. And, and you know, in the Eastern sense, there's a bit more detachment. There, it, there's a bit more disengagement. Um, uh, and, and so I'm, I'm actually more interested in the latter stillness. How, how do we know we've experienced it? I mean, I, it's, it's one of those things. You, if, if you don't know, if you don't know if you've experienced it, then you haven't experienced it. Do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. but, but, but I think I, I'm pretty confident when I say that word, everyone knows what I'm talking about because everyone yeah. has experienced it, you know, and you've experienced it in a lot of different ways, right? You experienced it, you know, uh, when, when your kid fell asleep on your chest, you ex- experienced it when you're sitting on a porch swing, you know, you experienced it skiing on a, you know, uh, uh, you know, making fresh tracks on a, on a mountain, you know, you experienced it, uh, you know, walking down the street of New York city, listening to music. Like there's lots of different ways to get it. Um, and, and I think we've all experienced it, but I think what all those, all those things have in common is a kind of a, of a slowing down of a clarity of a sort of an alignment of body and mind and spirit. And, uh, and, and, and what they, what they mostly have in common is what they enable. They either enable sort of peak performance or, or, or personal happiness or contentment of some form. What do you see as, as being the primary competition um, with stillness? Is it anxiety? Fear. I think it's, I think pretty much everything is competing with stillness. That's the irony is, is it, it's like ambition is competing with it. Uh, you know, uh, desire is competing with it. I, I, I sort of basically in the, in, I sort of came to the idea that it's like sort of there's stillness and there's craving, right? There's fullness and craving and, and what kind of it, it, it sort of, are you going to be doing whatever you're doing from a place of stillness and fullness or is it from a place of sort of, craving and insecurity and desire and anxiety you know mm-hmm. so i think there are a lot of different demands or competition for stillness um and uh and and you 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 have to sort of be constantly on guard for that are there, is there anything that you personally do to to kind of um mitigate that noise and find more stillness yeah, I mean, in your life i mean look living living out on this farm is part of it living in texas is part of it you know, uh, working for myself is part of it. You know, waking up early is part of it. My morning walks are a part of it. You know, not having alerts on my phone are part of it. Like, I, I don't think there's this one thing that you do. I think it's about creating, creating an environment in which stillness is possible. And then it's also about creating an environment that doesn't make stillness impossible. Mm. And when you look at a lot of people's schedules, when you look at a lot of people's priorities, of course they don't have any stillness. There's no they've, time for it. Yeah, they've, they've preemptively uh, rejected it. What are the best ways that you have found maybe to build stillness into organizations and, and teams? General uh, James Mattis uh, has, a, has a quote that I, I have in the book where he's like, you know, the number one problem for leaders today is that a lack of reflection, a lack of solitude and space to think. Um, and that's because they're always doing, doing, doing. They're always connected. Um, they're always talking to people. They're just not able to step back and think big picture. And so I think that's a, uh, you know, a, a really big one. Um, uh, I, I talk a lot about the Cuban Missile Crisis in the book. It's sort of one of the main stories. If you think about how the Cuban Missile Crisis evolved over 13 days, it's like, would that happen in 13 days, mm-hmm. you know, in, in 2019? Or would that be more like 13 minutes, you know? And, and, you know, one of Kennedy's expressions was about sort of using time as a tool, not as a couch. Um, and I, I love that, you know, just like the decision to slow things down, to think, to think big picture, to zoom out is, uh, is really, really, I think, lacking in today's world. There seems to be like a, a, a call to stillness, um, 
like recently with the new Tom Hanks movie and yeah. And uh, like other things coming up that are just kind of encouraging people to like slow down and unplug and, and, and things like that. Um, I think so. Yeah. yeah. I think we're realizing the costs, uh, the, the costs of the sort of culture and system we've built, which is, you know, come at the cost of our humanness, you know, of our decency, of, uh, of our ability to, to be happy or to enjoy anything. 